What is going on guys? My name is Kenji and welcome back to my channel. Hopefully it's not the first time that you're watching one of my videos, but just in case it is, I'm a doctor working in London. And in this video, I'll be taking you guys through everything that I carry on my person that allows me to do the things that I need to do on my daily job as a doctor. I actually also made a video about what's in my bag. So that'll be linked up above somewhere to go watch it. And that video showed you guys what I carry with me to the actual hospital. But in this video, I wanted to take the time to show you guys what I actually carry with me on my person every single day. So I'm gonna actually go through pockets to pockets to show you guys just how much I actually carry with me. If you guys ever bump into me in person, then I actually look a lot bigger than I actually am. Because of how filled these pockets are and how heavy I actually am, because of all the things I carry. So stick around to the end of the video to see exactly what I carry with me on my day to day. But let's go ahead and get started. So what I'm gonna do is go from pockets to pockets. I actually have three or four pockets on my scrubs. Uh, these are the scrubs that are actually given to me from my hospital. So not the most kind of flattering color, not the kind of most flattering design or shape, but one of the really useful things that they do have is that there's actually a bunch of pockets on my entire body, which allows me to carry everything I need on a daily basis. So let's start off with this pocket right um, up above here. So in this pocket, I actually carry two pens with me. And the reason for that is I have one pen that should actually, it shouldn't, yeah, it definitely should not be blue. When you're a doctor, you actually want to carry a black pen. And the nurses on my ward actually told me about this last week. So I don't actually know why I have a blue pen in here, but you want to have a black pen because when you write uh, paper notes, in my actual hospital, we write on paper, which is so outdated. But for some reason, we actually still use paper. And when you actually write with paper, you want to make sure you're using black ink because the printers or the scanners rather that scan your paper notes will not be very good to catch your kind of writing with blue ink. But yeah, I have one pen. I also carry a second pen with me. The reason being is that your consultant, the nurse, your colleague, they will steal your pen and they will not return it. So you do need a backup pen. The backup pen that I have is from the British Medical Association that I got for free. The really cool thing is that it actually has a flashlight uh, on the other side to it. Why that's really, really important is that when you're performing a neurological examination, especially when I'm in A&E right now, when I'm seeing uh, patients and, you know, children in A&E, I always have to do a full neurological examination, which involves flashing a light into their eye. It's also really important because if you wanna visualize the patient's tonsils, a lot of kids in A&E come in with tonsillitis. So being able to you know, actually look inside their mouth is super, super useful. So you do actually need a pen with a torch to carry with you at all times. In the same pocket, I also carry with me uh, scissors. This is a bit overkill, but the reason why I carry scissors is that when I'm in the A&E, like on this week that I'm currently on, you will have kids coming in with rashes or with trauma and for some reason you won't be able to take their t-shirt off because they're crying too much or because they have an injury over here so having a pair of scissors that can cut through that is super super useful uh, especially when you're in a &E. so a lot of the a &E doctors you'll actually find will carry a pair of scissors with them as well um, i also carry um as you can see over here uh, some tape so this is some normal tape but i normally carry some medical tape with me because whenever you're taking bloods from a patient or whenever you want to stick something down it's super useful to have uh, scissors and tape as well because you don't want to be sat next to a patient cutting tape with your teeth like you might do at home so having scissors with you and tape as well really is uh, quite helpful when you're on the job as well as that i obviously have my stethoscope so this is the all black stethoscope that i got from Littman, i believe it's called really really useful to have obviously as a doctor and i actually have my name engraved over here like you guys can see as i've mentioned previously the reason why you want to get your name engraved is that your consultant will borrow your stethoscope and will leave it on the side your colleagues will want to borrow your stethoscope I guarantee you it will get lost somewhere. So having your name engraved on it is super important. And if you don't have your name engraved on it, I should recommend that you get a piece of paper and add a sticker or something with your name on it. All like some permanent marker because I guarantee you someone will take your stethoscope. In the same pocket, I always have my mask here. So thank God in the hospital now, we only have to wear masks when we're actually seeing patients. So if I'm walking around the wards, I don't have to wear a mask or if I'm walking around the hospital or if I'm in the doctor's um, office, I often just take my mask off and keep it in here. Or if I'm feeling a bit like, you know, sick or a bit sickly, then I will carry my mask and wear it at all times. Okay, so I wanna take a quick break from the video to tell you guys about Picmonic who are kindly sponsoring this video. So guys, as a doctor on a daily basis, I have to remember a huge amount of information like the bones in the hand and the way that I actually remember all of my anatomy, all of my 
clinical information up until this day is Picmonic. I've been using Picmonic probably since my second year of medical school and I absolutely love it because it helps me memorize everything I need to know. What's really unique about Picmonic and why it actually helps you memorize things is that it uses a mnemonic, a picture, and also a story to make memorization super easy. So for example, the way that I'm actually able to remember the bones in the hands up until now, four years later after I learned it, is using Picmonic. I always start off by watching the educational video, followed by the story video immediately after. And here's a quick example of the educational video. Bones are described in this Picmonic by the eight carpal bones. The mnemonic to help remember these bones is some lovers try positions that they can't handle shown as the lovers trying positions until they can't handle it anymore. So as you guys can see, it starts off by giving you a mnemonic, followed by a picture, and then finally a story. And it's the actual combination between a picture, a mnemonic, and a story that tricks your brain into learning all of this information super easily. And to give you guys a quick example of what I mean, here is an example of the hand bone story. And it's during times like these that some lovers try positions that they can't handle. First, they tried a new position on scaffolding, where the whole world could see just how adventurous they were. But they fell before anyone noticed. So then they went even higher, to the lunar landscape. But this position always left one lover hanging. Once you've actually memorized the Picmonic, what's also super useful is that they actually have quizzes later on to test your understanding. And also what's super useful is you're actually able to customize the Picmonics to add any sort of information that you want inside that story. What's really, really cool is that Picmonic is always up to date with students around the entire world able to actually add their own facts, which is superimposed by the team of Picmonic experts every single day. A really funny and creative thing that Picmonic also does to make it easy to learn content is that all of the characters in the storylines across different topics are actually related, which makes it so much easier to tie in all of the information that you're actually trying to memorize. As a doctor, what's really useful is that Picmonic also comes on my iPhone, it comes on my MacBook and also my iPad. So whenever I'm in the hospital, I'm always able to memorize and remind myself of the information I need to know as a doctor. But that's Picmonic, let's go ahead and get back to the video. In the actual pockets down here below, I'm not gonna show you guys that because it is very, very down low. I have two pockets, one on the left side and one on the right side. Let's actually go ahead and start off with the right side. So in the right side, I always carry with me a pen and paper. The reason being is that when you're seeing patients and you're running around the ward, your consultant will add on jobs and will tell you to do certain jobs. Some nurses will ask you to sign off some documents or prescribe some medication. And when you're seeing patients at the same time, it's super, super difficult to try and memorize all the things you have to do on a daily basis. So I always carry a notepad with me. This is A6, so it fits very nicely into my pockets. On the left pocket, however, I also carry with me um, my ID cards. So I kind of have to hide them from you guys because of confidentiality, but I do have my ID cards here with me. And I also have one of these kind of, you know, stretchy, you know, lanyard things that I often just have tagged onto my pocket down below. What is really, really cool about these ID cards is actually that I have, it has a bunch of information on them. So on both sides, it actually has some really key information. On one side, it actually um, has a delirium assessment. So a lot of patients that I see or actually will be seeing on my next rotation in geriatrics, which is elderly medicine, will be delirious. All right, and delirious essentially means when they have an impairment in their mind because of an illness or because they have you know fecal impaction. There's a bunch of reasons as to why a patient might be delirious. And assessing delirium is actually a very difficult thing to do. So it's nice to have a card to remind me how to actually do that. On the other side, we also have a four IT uh, score assessment. Um, when you're actually seeing a patient, particularly in geriatrics, it's really important to be able to kind of assess their cognition. So this card actually reminds me how to briefly assess a patient's cognition. This includes things like how alert they are, um, asking them you know, how old they are, their date of birth, where they are, what year it is, assessing their attention, and basically seeing the possibility of them having a cognitive impairment or a possible delirium as well. So super nice to have on me at all times. Another card actually allows us to assess a patient um, after having a fall. So again, this is more uh, to do with geriatrics or pe patients who are really unwell. But if I'm called by one of the nurses to assess a patient who's fell down, it's actually very complicated to assess why a patient may have fallen down. So really nice reminder on that side. On the other side, the, um, the fall assessment actually carries on. So these are two cards I carry with me at uh, all times. I also have my hospital ID card in here and my library ID card as well, because I often go to the library to study. That's pretty much what I have uh, tagged below down here on my uh, scrubs. 
In the same pocket, what I also have are my AirPods Pro. So very important to have on me at all times. The reason being is that if, if I'm in the doctor's office and I want to listen to some music because I'm doing a bunch of admin, it's very, very important to actually have with me. If I'm on my lunch break as well and I want to watch uh, Netflix or whatever, I love having my AirPods with me at all times for easy access. In the same pocket, I often have a ward list with me. So when you go um, into the wards in the morning, they'll actually have a list with uh, all of the patients on it. So you'll have the patient's details, the name, the age of the patient, why they're actually in hospital, and the remaining sorts of jobs that need to be done for that given patient. So I often have that in my pocket with me so that if I'm on the wards and I'm running around and a nurse stops me asking about a particular patient, I obviously can't memorize where they are and what beds they're in. I can't memorize what's going on with them at all times. So having the ward list with me for all of my patients is super important to have in that pocket down below. Uh, in the same pocket, I also have a hand sanitizer. So this often is not the problem. Uh, in our hospitals, we often have hand sanitizers all over the place because of COVID and just generally because of infection. But I actually like to carry my own one. The reason being is that this is actually from Carex and it's a moisture uh, hand sanitizer. The ones in the hospital absolutely ruin my skin and they give my hands so much acne. Uh, not acne, sorry, eczema. So the, the, the one I like to use is this one because it moisturizes my hands a lot better. And sometimes I'm eating lunch and I'm not actually in the hospital where I need to actually use a hand sanitizer. So having my own personal one is super, super handy to have. And I think that's pretty much it for that pocket. On my hand as well, I actually have my Apple Watch. So if you're actually seeing patients, as I'm sure you know, you shouldn't actually have anything on your wrists or anything on your hands. You have to kind of be uh, bare below the elbow in medicine. So you're able to wash your hands all the way up to the top and you don't spread infection to the patients. But I often have my Apple Watch with me in the mornings when I'm going to work. Also, if I'm teaching medical students, so I often uh, teach medical students as well. If I'm teaching medical students, then I will have this on uh, with me. If I'm in the doctor's office and I'm not seeing patients and I'm just doing a bunch of admin work as well, it's super handy to have my Apple Watch with me at all times. And I think that's pretty much it for my pockets. However, what I always carry with me uh, on a daily basis are these two things. The first one is my Chili's water bottle. As I mentioned before in a previous video, it's super important to have your water bottle with you because for some reason, the NHS makes it so difficult for a doctor to get a drink. Sometimes the doctor's common room will be on the other side of the hospital and you have to trek to the other side of the hospital to get a nice drink. So I use this uh, kind of thermal uh, water bottle because it keeps all of my cold drinks cold. So in the morning, I often just fill it up with a bunch of juice and I'll carry it around with me for the entire day so I can stay well hydrated. As well as that, I also carry a thermos with me. This tends to be in the mornings when I go into the hospital because I like to have my coffee with me at all times. As you guys know, I don't like spending money on coffee in a Starbucks or in Costa, which cost me like £3.50, £4, which is ridiculous. <laughs> I always carry my thermos, thermos with me, so I always have coffee with me at all times. I'm quite a slow drinker, so I often just sip this throughout the entire day. So one thing that I completely forgot to film as part of my everyday carry, which is probably the most important part of what I carry on me on a daily basis is my iPhone uh, right over here. I have the iPhone 13 Pro Max, which is absolutely essential to what I do every day. The reason being is because of the apps that I actually have on my phone that give me so much more information. Back in the day, doctors used to have to memorize a bunch of information, but now we have these smart things in our phone. So on my actual phone, um, I have a folder here called the health folder, and it's really, really key with the apps it actually has. The first app that I use every single day on a daily basis is the BNF. This stands for the British National Formulary. And it's essentially a book that has all of the different drugs that we need on a daily basis, or pretty much every drug that is licensed to use in the UK. There's actually two versions. There's the BNF for adults and the BNFC for children. And as I'm on pediatrics, I'm actually on the children version. And what I actually do over here is I save in my favorites, the majority of drugs that I prescribe on a daily basis. So examples of that is like Comoxiclab here, and it gives me the indication Medications and the dose for all of my, for anything that I might actually prescribe it for. I also have paracetamol on there. I have ibuprofen and the app essentially gives me all of the doses that I need to treat any particular disease. So super useful to have. I also have MD Calc. Um, so MD Calc is essentially a calculator that works out all of the different scoring systems in medicine. So in medicine, for example, if you're seeing a patient who has pneumonia, you can actually calculate their CURB 65 score, which will tell you exactly how, uh, sick a patient might be. There's also other things like the PHQ-9. This is another scoring system that allows you to kind of quantify um, how likely a person is to actually be depressed. So there's a bunch of questions here that you can ask, like, do you have little interest or pleasure in doing things? And if that's so, you can click 
you know, several days, nearly every day, and that will give you a total score about the likelihood of them actually having depression. Um, so there's a bunch of useful scoring systems on here that again is really useful and I have um, a lot of the things that I use on a daily basis in the favorites over here. As well as that, there's also a micro guide. So micro guide is so essential. It essentially gives you the local antibiotic policy that you might find at your local hospital. Obviously, every hospital is different. Each region of the country uh, grows different bugs and there's different types of bacteria and viruses that might be present in a different area. What's really useful on here is you can literally go to like body systems, you can go to the GI system, for example, and then, you know, gastroenteritis, for example, and it'll actually give you the antibiotics that should be prescribed at your local hospital or at your local trust. So super useful as well. Another thing that I might use as well is the induction app. This again is what I use on a daily basis. When you're in hospital, you need to call, you know, the lab all the time. You need to call urology or different departments around the entire hospital. And this is essentially a uh, catalog of all of the numbers that you might need to call at your local hospital. And yeah, highly recommend you guys check out these apps uh, on your phone as well. What I also use my phone for on a daily basis is a calculator. So I always have a calculator on hand. The reason being is that in pediatrics now, a lot of the times we have to actually prescribe medication based on a patient's weight. So I'm constantly doing calculations on my phone. Uh, and of course, I also use Google Chrome on a daily basis to Google stuff uh, whenever I forget anything. That's also really, really nice to have. And yeah, that's pretty much what I use on a daily basis on my phone. And that is pretty much what I carry with me on a daily basis, guys. All of these these things here is all you need as a doctor to actually do your job properly. And I really hope these tips have helped you out, whether you're a medical student or a doctor, and you're wanting to actually improve how well you can treat a patient. Before you guys leave, here are a bunch of videos on my channel that you may want to check out that will hopefully add some value to your life. If you wouldn't mind spending two seconds to drop a like down below in the video, it really helps the channel grow and reach more people. And also I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe with notifications on to never miss another upload. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.